Hi, everyone. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Euro Nation as the traditional custodians of the land where we stand. Um, um, and Auntie Joan, thank you for doing welcome to country. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians as the first Australians and um, from nations that truly practice multiculturalism. Um, I'm a little bit nervous, so forgive me. Um, I'd also like to thank Andrew and Vicky for giving me the opportunity to talk. Um, I feel a bit amateur at the moment because hearing Pino speak and I'm sure hearing Helen speak, you guys are amazing and I have so much respect for you, so thank you. I, I look forward to hearing from your talks. Um, so my talk is really on multicultural Australia and the Asian century, and I think some of what I, um, what uh, Pino has spoken about is gonna feed back into to, to what I'm gonna talk about. Um, I'd like to start off by playing a video, which I hope the AV guys have, which is a showreel of all the programs that ABC has on for you in 2013. <laughs> Gumbel's proved that they want to marry her. What else is there to find out? So this is how it's going to be between us and our playing games when we mess up each other's lives. Is it the sort of person who'd steal a body from a morgue? Jesus, get off the car! Ah! Blake, about seven minutes. Yes, I was just testing it. Sometimes you're so... Naive. Passionate. He stepped off the farm and shuffled into the hearts of Australians. God. I'm going to run the Sydney to Melbourne ultramarathon. Push down on the balls of your feet. We want you to at least look like a runner. He says to the man in the gumboots. You're against her. Packer is deeper pockets. I don't care. Drive a price. You probably deserved it. You're a piece of work. They're kicking us out. One young man takes on the big boys. This is my home. Not anymore, little man. Well, may we say God save the Queen, because nothing will save the Governor-General. With the trainees, I'll be looking for someone that's an achiever. you to step up and grow a set of balls. If you get in the water amongst those guys, you're gone. I'm just not attracted to you on any levels, and the thought of being intimate is... is awful. Tractor Monkeys is a game show that takes a left turn, heads up hills and digs deep into piles of precious video awesomeness. We'll dig up disturbing, eye-opening and solid gold pop culture happenings from the past, the present and the future. Future. Mum and Dad are her parents. She's our sister. Come on, Amber. It's a lot for him to take in. Air is a lot for him to take in. <laughs> Friday! I do like a man with a plan. Your baby is presenting in the breech position. You what? It's coming out to us first. So, how many Asians did you spot in the showreel? Two. And I think one of them was, she didn't really have any dialogue, the second one was a young kid holding a gun. Um, so, welcome to Australia and the Asian century, uh, or at least ABC portrays it. And I just want to read uh, two little synopsises for the shows that ABC has commissioned. Uh, actually, I should say beforehand that I've chosen to criticise or uh, focus on ABC, not because um, all the other channels are doing a great job, but because um, one, ABC is funded by the government, and I think they were just a good example of, you know, sort of bringing out my points. Um, the commercial channels, you know, I don't even know where to start with that. Um, and SBS is doing some really good things and not so great things, so, you know, there's some discussion around that as well. Um, so, two synopsis. So the one is, uh, is a show called Time of Our Lives, which is a 13-part drama series with a stellar cast that delves into the lives of three generations of a modern Australian family. What really makes us happy? What do some relationships work? Why do some relationships work and why do some fail? Do you have to have kids to be happy? Does everyone need a career? How much is enough? Et cetera, et cetera. Starring Claudia Carvin, Justin Clark, Shane Jack Jacobson, William McGuinness, Stephen Curry, Michelle Moore, Tony Barry, Sue Jones, and Anita Hey, so that is the Australian modern family, uh, white Australian family with a very white Australian story. Um, and then another synopsis is where you saw a young boy with a gun, and I think the Asian woman is also part of the same show. It's called Serangoon Road, which is a fast-paced detective drama series set against the exotic and tumultuous backdrop of 1960s Singapore. 
The series tells uh, the story of an Australian-born Sam Callaghan, whose childhood war was spent in World War II Japan, uh, Japanese internment camps, etc., etc. So the entire story is set in Singapore. So really, um, the only time you see Asians on Australian television is when they're a foreigner. Uh, and you know, and I looked through the entire ABC programming, um, and it was great. Actually, I was really happy to see um, Indigenous programming, but in terms of multicultural programming, there was. Pretty much nothing. Um, and this is where I'd like to bring up this concept, which I think um, I've noticed that Pino kind of mentioned, is this whole idea that the ethnic media has this own little space here, and then there's a mainstream media, um, and that any sort of crossover is problematic, or you know, um, there's no need to have Asian Australians and culturally diverse Australians on mainstream television because often they say, well, they have SBS mm -hmm. and so on. So this whole idea that um, you know, cultural diversity is a niche thing. And it's only through market demands have organizations responded. I think there's been hardly any progress in terms of policy. And if there is policy, there's been hardly any um, progress in terms of implementing such policy. Um, so what we have is we really still have a very insular imagining of Australia as a white nation. And that is continued to be reinforced by the media, uh, because there's nothing on screen to challenge that notion. You know what I mean? Whenever there's a for, um, person of color, they are a foreigner. So it reinforces this idea that you know Australia is a white nation, which is hugely problematic because it was never a white nation to begin with. Um, and this whole idea of us and them, unfortunately, I f I wrote a little opinion piece in Arts Hub about. The Asian Century White Paper. I don't know if any of you had the chance to read it. Um, it's a really good step forward in acknowledging our place in Asia Pacific and our need to work better with um, uh, Asian countries. But what it fails to do is it completely forgets that there are Asians living in Australia. There are Asian Australians. Um, I mean, the report does go in doing some great stuff acknowledging Asian Australians and start saying, you know, close to one in ten. Uh, of the Australian population identifies of Asian ancestry. Um, and in 2010 to 11, for the first time in Australian history, Brit Britain was not the main source of new permanent migrants. Uh, more people moved here from China than any other country. And from 2011 to 12, India was the biggest number of source for new permanent migrants. Um, <coughs> so how does this translate to policy? And I'm going to particularly focus on arts policies. So uh, I'm going to re read out three parts from, uh, the uh, from the policy section of the Asian Century White Paper. One of them says, uh, we encourage the arts community and the arts institutions, including those in regional Australia, to look to Asia when planning programs. Another one says, uh, we will work with the media industry through representative bodies, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for Australians to receive more day-to-day -day news about major events and issues from across the region. Another one talks about actually requesting ABC and SBS to examine how to promote extensive coverage of the region in all aspects of content and programming. You would have noticed that all references to Asia is an external, you know, as a region, as an outside place. There's no real reference to Asian Australians um, and um, the part they can play in our, you know, bettering our relationships with, the, with Asia. Um, yep. So, so what is the consequences of such policies? Well, one, it is a false imagining of Australia as a white nation. Um, and, um, <coughs> sorry. Another one is that what it creates is a fractured arts and cultural space that is not truly representative of Australian culture. Um, and this is where the democrat democratization of media is very important because as more and more people start to go online to access content and so on, they have a choice, you know what I mean? You're no longer dictated by a television executive on what you can and can't watch. Um, but still, I think that is no excuse to give up on mainstream media because a lot of funding goes into this and you know, hence we need to have a say as Australians on how our stories are told. Um, what it's also produces is a very uncompetitive arts market in my opinion and I always like to make an economic argument because I think a lot of people in politics are very uninterested in the soft stuff in terms of you know social and cultural implications. They want to see economic implications. Um, and I think there is something really viable about telling a dice stories of diaspora communities. Asian Australians have something that Asians who live in Asia don't, and um, white Australians and other you know, people who live in this land don't, which is they can transcend linguistic and cultural barriers and create 
artworks and cultural pieces that are accessible to both communities and hence have a richer value. Um, and of course, our, I think our greatest advantage is besides the indigenous Australian culture, which is hugely underrepresented anyway, is depicting diasporic stories and migrant stories because that is what's unique about this land. It's, it's a land that has, you know, so many different languages and so many different cultures all coexisting in the same space. So how do we resolve these issues? Um, I think representation is definitely happening. I know that a lot more work has been commissioned, even though that ABC um, serial wasn't a good example. Um, but decision makers in media and government remain unchanged because if you look at a lot of the, um, a really good example, and um, it, it's a bit cheeky, I was gonna show you on, I might be able to show you quickly. While I was doing my research for this talk, I was looking at, uh, looking at the staff at AsiaLink, which is a University of Melbourne initiative. Um, and please don't take offense, but I found it quite amusing. If you look through the staff, I was actually looking for an Asian Australian as I was scrolling down. Maybe Bernadine is. Um, so I just kept scrolling down and down and down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. And then we get to May Liak, who's a project support officer. <laughs> and we go further. Down, 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 down. And we get to Silo, who's the executive assistant to the group CEO. Santi Tran, who's a financial officer. And Jamie Dang, who's a receptionist. If that's not cultural imperialism, I'm not sure what is. Um, so what we need is, besides funding allocation and grants and so on, we need uh, culturally diverse Australians, including Asian Australians, to sit on advisory panels, sit on boards, to be in positions where they can make decisions so we can tell our own stories, rather than it always being through the filter of a white or an Anglo-Australian perspective. Um, because while the money may be allocated, the stories are still being decided, approved by you know someone who's not from that community. Um, and that's why staff representation is very important. Um, an example is, did you know that ABC and SBS actually have no multicultural internships? Um, so, you know, we need to have, we need to lobby and request these organizations to put in pathways to allow people of culturally diverse backgrounds to enter organizations. So, in the future, um, these people can, you know, work through the ranks and be in places where they have positions of power. Um, Having said that, I mean, I'd like to finish on a good note, which is I have seen a lot of, if you've ever watched ABC uh, 24, which is the ABC News Channel, I see lots of culturally diverse Australian newsreaders. And um, of course, Katrina, you from SBS is here, who's a, a great SBS journalist, and a few other people who've, you know, who are young people who are emerging in the field. So I think there's a lot of hope and potential for the future. But I think the most important point is, you know, we need to lobby our government to put policies into action and to allow for culturally diverse Australians to be in places of you know, decision makings where we can tell our stories. So thank you.